Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 and we're looking at our barn finds first. Hey, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I keep telling Nan she needs something small to drive down to the shops. <laughs> she could drive this inside and all the way down the cat food aisle. Yeah, check out the Top Gear episode where Clarkson squeezes himself into one of these and then drives through the BBC building. And then we've got five more still to find. I believe the green one is just waiting for us to get to the right level. Three of these will also be seasonal exclusives, like the peel was. And then the other one, you need a certain house for, I believe. All right, well, that's all of the barn finds and wheel spins out of the way. And we've got our mini X-ray that I believe we won last week or something. And now we've got to perform three kangaroo skill combos in it. We need three great ear skills for one of the daily challenges, so hopefully we'll get them both at the same time. So if we need some kangaroo skills, I don't know if that counted, but we've got one of the great ear skills that we need. We really need to take it to one of the parks, like the off-road parks. Though this place does have some jumps, they need to be strung in quick succession in order to get the kangaroo skill. So we got that there. So there's our high jumper challenge complete, so that's the three great air skills. Ah, I see something over here though. We've got some consecutive ramps here. Can we jump far enough, first of all, to get onto the next platform? Yup, so that's one, that's two, that's three. Is that enough for a kangaroo skill? Yes it is. Cool, so we just need to go back around and do that again. It's a bit more reliable than just screaming across the countryside and hoping for the best. Which is my usual tactic for these sorts of things. And on to the last one. And thump, there we go, cresting hills complete. What's the next challenge? Earn an ultimate skill chain. Well, so ultimate skill chain, you just need to keep lining skills together. Wreckage is obviously the easiest one to get. But if you just get wreckage, if you just keep breaking stuff, it doesn't rack up a combo for you indefinitely. You do need to work in like a drift skill here and there. Ideally, if you can combo stuff together, so we got like side swipe, wrecking ball, all that sort of good stuff with that as well. That just helped keep it going even longer. Because the combo won't end until after the thing that has been most recently achieved has been on your screen for a certain amount of time, for however many seconds. So if you can line up a good combo and have lots of stuff just coming through. Okay, it's going to keep telling me about that barn find rumor until I look at it on the map, isn't it? That's rather annoying. <laughs> okay, we break something there and go back again. I haven't seen the ultimate skill thing come up yet. We're waiting for something to pop up the top. And there we go. Turn up the heat completed. That should be it. Ultimate skill chain. Fantastic. And this car isn't really giving us a huge bonus or multipliers or anything, so oh, we've got the burnout to extend it a little bit longer. We'll let that run out and see what our next objective is. Okay, now we need to win four cross-country series events. We're going to leave that one for the time being, and let's go find that barn find. Alright, so the next barn find is down by the Horizon Festival site. A lot of the time you'll still be down in this area anyway. I've just splurged out and bought a ton of extra houses. Thankfully, now I have fast travel for free because I've been a busy boy and have unlocked all of the bonus boards. And also sometimes pick out on the map overlay where the barn might be. I'm thinking it might be up in these trees. Nah, probably not to be honest. It's just a little bit too populated. Oh, never mind. Nothing to see there. Moving on. <laughs> oh, there we go. I can see it already from a distance. It's not hidden in the trees like some are. A wee gem of an Aston. Maybe a whacking great diamond of an Aston if it's the one I think. You ever heard of a Segato? <sighs> right. Let's get it out of here. DB4 Segato. So that'll be ready in a little while. There is a cross-country event over here, and we do need to win four of these. So we haven't done any upgrades, but we have done a little bit of tuning to hopefully give it a bit more of a boost. It was tuned way too much 
on the high end for the final ratio which was actually killing its acceleration because it was just spending too long just changing gear so now we can hopefully eke out a bit more speed because it was topping out at like 160 earlier and we need to go much faster than that if we want to beat these guys we'll worry about giving it a new engine and a later upgrade some people go through, some people go round. I was kind of hoping someone would go straight into it. So now hopefully when it comes to these corners up here, we can just ease our way through them a bit better than our opponents. And then pile on the power again. Are we going to go blasting across the white horse, are we? Well, that's a bit rude for a national monument. Yeah, there's no avoiding it. We've got to go straight through. I think we do want to upgrade this into the A class so we have an extreme off-road option at that level. Because otherwise we would have to use the Jeep Trail Cat and it is terrible from my remembrance. I don't know, maybe I should give that another go. It probably just needs a good amount of upgrades and tuning. But this is right at the top of the B class so we won't be able to do much upgrades to it without pushing it into A grade anyway. So let's just give into it. <laughs> But for now, that's one in the bag. So we need to win three more races, cross-country races, in the Mini. And it just so happens that one of the seasonal championships requires an A-Class Extreme Off-Road Vehicle, which we've just upgraded this one to be. So that lets us double dip. We can win the three races in this vehicle, and in do so, finish off the seasonal championship. And that works towards our 100% goal. But break hard for this because you don't want to go offline on this jump. Otherwise, you end up in the water. That jump there is a bait because you want to keep accelerating through here. You don't want to just be flying through the air. This is handy because it's going uphill and you need to slow down anyway. No, it's almost like a skateboard ramp. They haven't really caught up. Makes a change for a cross-country race, to be honest. Further reinforces that the A class for the cross-country is kind of the best class. Once you push into the S class, everything goes way too fast. And it's just crazy. And chaos. Exhibit A being our Bowl of Wildcat series last time. <laughs> Really good for open world exploration, so you just zoom across the countryside. But when it comes to the actual racing, A class I think is where it's at. B also good, but you're just going a little bit slow. And that'll do it for race number one. Race number two, and this one is a point to point instead of a lap. Amusingly, we pretty much finish just down here from where we start. It's like, do we really have to go through all the checkpoints? Can't I just turn right down here? It's actually a bit of a tighter track, this one. We don't get as much raw speed. We're going to bog down in the water a bit, but I'll try and stay to the side so that it doesn't have as much of an effect on us. I think these guys are a bit better equipped for that. Our ride height is not as high as some of the others. Even though we're still a very jacked up mini. More of a maxi, I think. Ooh, a little bit too loose on that corner. Yeah, couldn't make the overtake stick. Now I've got to try and get past this guy here. We've got only two corners to go. This is a really fast track. Oh, okay, we're going to rewind that one. We just got a really awkward hop after jumping over a little bounce and then smashing through a field. The car just decided, nope, I'm going this way now. <laughs> that just happens sometimes. There's not much you can do about that. And we go. Managed to get the inside through there. The rewind mechanic, yeah, it's cheesy, but... For the cross-country ones especially. Ooh, yep. 
like that. <laughs> the cross country ones especially where it's so volatile and just so random sometimes how the cars behave. You just got to abuse it. Final race of the championship now. And we've got another real quick lap race. This one, I don't like this track, generally. <laughs> Especially in other vehicles, sometimes the game wants you to do this track or one of the others in this zone in vehicles that really aren't suited for going through these water traps. So at least we've got the right vehicle class, but it's still a bit annoying with some of the corners and with those water traps just getting a bit bogged down. It really wants you to just stay in the drink. Let's <laughs> just wash your wheel wells. May as well just call this race the car wash and be done with it. That poor tree just gets it every time I come through that corner. What's funny is that we dedicated time to getting the kangaroo skills earlier on, and now we're just getting them anyway in these races. I shouldn't have bothered. <laughs> it's kind of a bit of a pro tip, really, I guess, is uh, just jump straight into the races, because you're probably going to get all of the skills that you need for the daily challenges just by doing the races. <laughs> you won't have to try to get them specifically. Only with the ones that don't require race interactions like there are some that are like lucky escape where it's like a near miss and a drift for npc vehicles but anything that's race oriented or just agnostic like the air skills and stuff just jump into a cross-country race and you're gonna get it anyway they make you jump and just like that that was really quick <laughs> world's toughest rally completed that is the weekly challenge done and now for something completely different. Master Chief has entered the game. Nothing to see here. Nothing out of the ordinary. This is Kilo Actual. Cortana, do you read me? I heard you need a pickup. Let's not be in the cockpit for that. We're all done here and ready for dust off. Yeah, this is Halo now. Yeah. The voice lines are great. We're gonna make it home after all. Okay, new LZ found. We don't have long. This ring is gonna go nuclear in three minutes, and we do not want to be here when it does. Marines, I've added coordinates to your nav. Be there for evac in three minutes. Roger that, Cortana. Hoorah! Look at these ancient dwellings. It almost looks like something lives here. Ancient dwellings? Yep. Just go straight up here. We've got a better chance of avoiding those banshees off-road. Great thing is, is that the Warthog in this handles better than it does in the actual Halo games. So. Well, which is not exactly difficult. So, it's some fun with the cinematography. The, the Banshees aren't even shooting at us. <laughs> they, they didn't really put any of the combat physics into the game. Oh, that dude missed a checkpoint. He's going to have to go back. They keep talking about the Banshees and save us. And it's like, what do you want me to do? I can't shoot them down. I don't think it actually matters what your time is or anything like that. They like say that, oh, you've only got X number of minutes. But I don't think it matters. This cave is not a natural formation. I think that's a voice line from the first game. Can we just jump into the pelican? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> I 
And then we pretty much end over the mountain. Uh, we pretty much end just along the beach from where we started in the first place. <laughs> All of that when we could have just driven along the beach. Oh well. We had some fun while we did it. 15 seconds. I think 3.15 is basically your target. I don't think it matters. There we go. <laughs> And we are 50% on the season, which gives us, I think, just a backstage pass. Yeah, which means you can then go through and purchase some other hypercar. Oh, and we're 50% through the series already, so two backstage passes. All right, on to the next championship. And this called for a retro hot hatch of C rating. As you can see, we are doing a lot better than everyone else. Now... <laughs> I have done a bit of upgrades and we have focused on acceleration and handling like is our want. Given it all wheel drive, this was a this is a beat up Corrado. I've given it all wheel drive instead of front wheel drive. That immediately makes a huge difference on loose surfaces. That was a terrible corner though, but we're just gonna run with it. We're just gonna break that fence. That's what slowed us down there is just getting stuck behind the fence. We've got two more laps to get over that. I think we'll go into cock review for this and we get the lovely classic green dials. Fantastic. Very fallout. <laughs> so that's lap one done. We're in the lead. It's not a comfortable lead yet. We've got to concentrate a bit more and pull out a bit more of a lead on the second lap if we can. It's a bit of a better corner there. Still a bit of a slide, but we didn't end up demolishing the fence. That's what really slows you down. This rating of car, if you get caught on obstacles, you're going to take a huge speed hit. The hard part is just coming up here. We've got this back corner there. We've got a bit of a jump before the finish line. And then we've got this really sharp corner straight after the line. We've got to break hard for that. That was pretty well done. Pretty happy with that. B rating is definitely where it's at, more for the dirt races. But a well-tuned C-Class is still a lot of fun. It just does take a little bit longer to get around each lap. But you're not as crazy coming off all of the jumps. The problem with the higher ratings is that you just go over the jumps and lose control. <laughs> you just don't get a chance to brake properly. But that is that. It's the fact that this race is called Mud Kickers 4x4 Scramble and they want you to do it in hot hatches. Yeah, I'm glad that I gave this thing all wheel drive. <laughs> now I'm wishing I'd given it off road race tyres, but that wasn't even an option. <laughs> I couldn't even give it rally tyres because uh, it would have bumped it into A grade. So the kindest thing you can do is at least give it four wheel drive instead of front wheel drive because oof. Oop. <laughs> almost tipped over there. That is the hazard with this track specifically. If you're not careful on those jumps, your car will just want to roll. <laughs> just want to do a forward roll. I think the AI might have done that, and that's why they're so far back. You basically need to break just before those jumps, so that you don't go over them too fast. It's a, a little bit counterintuitive, but you don't want to jump if you can avoid it, really. Because you just don't know what's going to happen over the other side. At least you can accelerate down the hill then. We'll see how we go this time. Once again, if we can keep it clean, we'll be happy. That's pretty much the goal with these races. So just kind of lift off over here so we're not jumping as badly. Oh, we still almost tipped. It's just because of the bump going over the other side there that if it catches the rear of your car, it just pitches you forward. But more clean racing. I genuinely feel that the ultimate clean racing, as a reward for that, it should be self-sustaining, really. Uh, it shouldn't expire. 
like the ultimate speeds if you get uh, ultimate speed it will tick up at such a rate that it'll never expire you can just keep racking up ultimate speed after ultimate speed and i feel that should be the same with any of the ultimate skills like ultimate clean racing should tick at just the right rate so we did a little bunny hop there instead should tick at just the right rate to keep the combo going without you relying on anything else because if you are racing cleanly you're not going to be getting drift skills or anything like that and if it's not a fast track you're not going to be getting speed skills either so your reward for racing cleanly and not getting of the other skill types should be that it just keeps itself going every checkpoint should be a clean racing tick anyway rant over <laughs> final race and I think I did this the wrong way around because it looks like this one is ending about where the last race was so I think I was meant to come and do this one second and then the other one third never mind I have free fast travel so it's no longer a big deal <laughs> oh and I'm just getting pushed into the wall there but managed to avoid it again if I can get the clean racing bonuses I'll be happy Hang on, this is familiar. We were just racing on the surface in the first race. So we have this same bit here. This same corner here. But after going over this jump, or this crest, we get the jump here, but we don't have the sharp turn to the left. We instead have a sharp turn to the right. This is where the finishing line was of the first race. And straight back into the rough stuff, and sure enough, this is the 4x4 track that we were just in, the Mud Kickers Park. And we even have the same straight here with the big jumps that we've got to be careful not to tip over. In fact, it wanted to right there. Interestingly, the checkpoint isn't until right at the end, so you can take whatever line through here that you like. There might even be a safer way of going around. You'd think it should be. It should really be an achievement to maintain a clean race throughout. But never mind. Happiness is its own reward. Right, well, we ran through all of our barn finds at the top of the episode. And now we get to use one. Because I needed an A-class Jaguar. And uh, I got this E-type. So I've tuned it up to be A-class from like C. It's going to be tricky, I think. Let's, let's go outside so we can actually appreciate the car, because that's why you have an E-Type, is to appreciate the car. It's going to be interesting, because this is not a modern car. I've made what handling adjustments and tuning adjustments I can, but let's be real, it's not going to be as competitive as the others. So that's kind of my handicap against the AI level. Uh, the game prompt me do you want to increase the ai difficulty to win more credits no i'll give myself a handicap of racing a classic car instead of a modern f-type ah oh, see i lightly tapped the back of that guy and it ruined my combo and my clean racing that's rude i hate it when that happens so it's barely a bump someone else had the same idea with their e-type our handling there's a lot better than i am we're only 25% of the way through this race. We've got plenty to go. A lot of it is just I've got to get used to this car and it's handling idiosyncrasies so I know how to use it. When do I need a brake for a corner, for example? I definitely need to go through here. Like, I've tuned the brakes and everything, but... <laughs> but <laughs> it can only do so much. If we just stay in touch through here, that's kind of fine. So we've still got over half the race to go. Now the other thing where this was going to struggle is for top speed. The gearing was really weird on this. Like the ratios were so strange. It, it wants to just stay in first and second for pretty much the first 160k an hour, which is fine to be honest I guess, but then it was never using the top gears. 
and was preventing itself from getting to its true maximum speed. Because the aerodynamics will certainly allow for it. This XJS in front of us is, is also a very nice choice. Honestly, practically speaking, the better car. But the E-Type is prettier, so... I don't think we're going to catch the guy in front, but we're also not going to get caught. Actually, you never know, we might catch this guy because I think we might have the legs on him. I think this is where my tuning comes into it, that we're able to reach our top gear. It's going to be close. There we go, sneak through because he had to break for the corner. And somehow we managed to take the win. That's the track is a bit greasy on this one, so maybe I should have changed the tuning a bit. I'm going to go in the cockpit for this one, especially for these tight corners up here, because I find that a lot easier to get through. Third person view is certainly better for appreciating the lines of the car, but harder to tell where you are, I find. I feel the the feeling of the race is much better when you're in the cockpit view. Get on the inside there. We ran a bit wide. Hey Razor, I see you there. <laughs> Navigate this tricky corner section. You can feel it start to try and skid a little bit. The XJS is back in the lead. No surprise. It would have been the more sensible option. But since when have we cared about sensible? We have an E-Type for crying out loud. Oh, there it is. It's that time again I came like Aki 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 That's the motivation I need. Normally I don't uh stream this but I thought that I wasn't sure what to play if in doubt do the thing that I'm gonna want to do anyway our monthly mission is to get a hundred percent on the series for the final playlist so final lap we've managed to stay ahead we're over breaking a bit on some of these sections but we've got the final corner section to work our way through here but up to the finish line with ultimate clean racing preserved so <laughs> final race with our cool cat and it's another quick fire circuit three quick laps we'll see if we can get the clean bonuses probably not because as soon as we get to the corners up here we're gonna ram into the back of someone who's braking too hard i suspect yeah almost <laughs> oh. see that one it let me off on sometimes it doesn't sometimes it'll just go nope i'm going to cancel your combo that time it got generous this corner section is familiar from the previous track but we were going straight through up there i believe instead of turning left so <laughs> It's just a little bit of an extension. It's kind of fun when tracks do overlap. You get to use what you learned on the previous one. Still managed to avoid crashing too hard into the corner. I'm trying to race responsibly and not just smash into people. It's really hard, guys. You should be proud of me. Okay, so second position for the final lap. And that's kind of acceptable. The other guy didn't rack it. Oh, that was the that was the non-corner. This is the corner we actually had to break for. Baited. I would prefer to win. Yeah, there we go. Haha, -ha, you went wide. I'm staying on the inside. You can't get past me without crashing into me. Almost a little drift tap there, just for fun. And ease it through the final bend. And we're on the home straight. 
Nice quick race that one. Cross the line. And that's the championship. Win all seasonal championships in one autumn season. Automobiles. Perfect. Third against average. Second against above average. First against highly skilled. It's completely backwards. Like, the way that they do that is very backwards. <laughs> the first reward should be getting first against the lower difficulty, and then second against the higher difficulty, and then third against the highest difficulty. But no, instead you have to get much better. <laughs> And we are now 80% complete in autumn out of the 100% that we're gunning for. And the only things that remain are the multiplayer segments of the trial and the playground games and the rest of the daily challenges because we're doing this only a couple of days into the season. We're going to have to come back at least twice. That's the thing. You need to log in at least three times within a week in order to be able to clear them. So we're going to achieve these offline and uh, won't be part of any particular video but you can trust that we've completed it uh, next week i'll be showing off that i got 100 percent in this season if not i'll be very sad before we go we're going to jump into our peel that we got from our barn find and we're going to come over here and try and get the final influence board that we need because there's this tricky little guy hiding in the alleyway there and I think the only other way you can get it is by jumping up the hill to the left hitting the roof in such a way that your car falls down into the gap but if you have the peel I believe we can just do that <laughs> and we smash all 200 bonus boards circumventing things like a boss now the peel is a seasonal a barn find you've got to get it in summer but so long as you do that's a free influence board it's pretty much the only thing this car is useful for for real this time thank you very much for watching <laughs> and we'll see you next time for winter